Am I the asshole for putting no effort into cooking dinner for my family my one night for cooking? In my 15 male family once we turn 12 we're supposed to cook a dinner for everyone once a week. We start out with help but at age 14 it's on us alone to do our one night. So far me, my sister Miley, 14 female, and my brother Cole, 12 male, have started. Our younger siblings Shay, 10 female, and Lincoln, 8 male, don't cook yet. Of the three of us I'm the only one who likes cooking. I actually took cooking classes before and I go to a summer camp that's focused on cooking. I also cook and bake with my grandparents when we see them. Both of them are really good cooks. I always tried to make a really nice dinner for us, something we'd really enjoy. My siblings never put any effort in and basically serve whatever. They hate it so I get it. When I started doing something more effort my parents were encouraging. But over time everyone is just so negative about it. My siblings complain that it's not burritos or tacos, but then they all want different kinds which is still more effort, or they want me to make pizzas or burgers. My parents complain about the price, they complain about the time it takes me to cook versus my siblings, they complain I'm trying to look better than them. My siblings complain about veggies I include in what I cook. I made a pasta once and they kept saying it was puke because there were veggies. Miley and Cole need to include veggies too, it's a rule our parents made, but instead of all the whining my siblings just push the veggies aside and refuse to eat them. And my parents praise them for being so fast and cheap. I asked my parents if they'd be less negative if we decided on a budget for my cooking. They told me yes, so I adjusted what I was cooking to make it work. But they were still negative that I take 10-15 minutes longer and that I'm trying to upstage them in cooking or that I'm showing off. So I had enough and the last three weeks I put no effort in. I boil veggies, potatoes, and cook meat and I slap it on a plate. Miley and Cole don't add gravy or sauce so neither do I my parents made such a big deal out of it and told me I'm capable of way better and my siblings complained they're not tacos or burritos. I said I don't want to make ungrateful people happy with my food when I don't have to. Dad said I could never make it as a chef. I said it would be different for people paying for food. Especially if I was getting some appreciation instead of everyone always complaining now. My parents said it's unacceptable. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Others here are giving good advice, so I'm not gonna repeat it. I will make a suggestion. Hand out frozen dinners and have them line up in front of the microwave winking face. If they can't appreciate your efforts, I'd lower the effort too. Not the asshole. They can't have it both ways. Are you putting in too much effort to supposedly upstage them and show off or not enough effort and making unacceptable food? If all you receive for your hard work is criticism and complaints, of course you're going to become disheartened. Not the asshole. My parents complain about the price. They complain about the time it takes me to cook versus my siblings. They complain I'm trying to look better than them. I'm trying to upstage them in cooking or that I'm showing off. My parents made such a big deal out of it and told me I'm capable of way better. They cannot have it both ways. They need to either quit their griping about time and effort and money, or they need to quit griping about you matching your siblings' efforts. Not the asshole and hopefully you will keep your passion for cooking. Please note that your parents' behavior is bad parenting. They might mean it educational but comparing you against your siblings is just wrong. Instead they should encourage you and also show all of you what good cooking is. Burgers, pizza, etc. should be the exception and not the norm. Also is it only your food they are complaining about? Just do sandwiches from now on. Cheap and it includes veggies. Also they are all old enough to eat what is served. Mamas and papas might do extras but you are a child. If they don't want to eat it so be it. Not the asshole. In all honesty? I'd be slapping a pad of paper and a pencil in front of them and demanding that they make a specific outline of their expectations regarding what types of food they expect, how much your budget is, and how long you have for prep. Then force them to explain how you can realistically meet these guidelines, and give a good reason, not excuse, why your siblings shouldn't be required to do the same. Not the asshole. Cooking for people who won't eat what you cook, complain about what you cook is exhausting and discouraging. It makes you not even want to try. If your parents want you to cook anything more complicated than plain protein, plain veggie, plain starch, they should encourage your efforts. They should require your siblings to have at least a few bites of everything, and they should call them out when they complain. 
and they should 100% not be dragging you over it, taking an extra 15-20 minutes. Good food takes time. Your parents don't get to have their well-cooked meat with gravy and fixins and eat it, too. Either support your efforts, or eat your effortless cooking without complaint. Am I the asshole for not moving so a child to sit down on public transport? There is public transport where I live, subway, and like anywhere, it's generally understood you give up your seat for someone who is elderly, disabled, or pregnant. I always try to do this. I was sitting down on the subway this week and who I assume were parents, mom, dad, with two kids got on. There was one available seat which one child sat on, and then the mom asked if I could give up my seat for the other child. I politely refused and said something along the lines of, sorry I don't want to give up my seat, I'm on this train for a long time, which is true, it's a long journey for me. Another part of the reason, even though it's embarrassing and I didn't say, is that I have bad blisters on my feet at the moment. The mom responded, wow, you wouldn't give up your seat for a child? I said that I wouldn't, and then someone else on the train gave up their seat. Even if I hadn't had blisters on my feet, I still don't think I would have given up my seat for a child. They don't have problems standing, and probably have better balance than most adults. I know I have a bias here because I'm purposefully child-free and my pet peeve is parents who feel they or their children are entitled to be the priority. While this was happening, everyone on the train was looking at me like I'm a massive ass. So am I the asshole? Blank. Edit. Thanks everyone for your thoughts, didn't expect this to blow up. The consensus seems to be not the asshole but a few people have said it depends on the age of the child, or that I should have said I had blisters, which is fair. I'm not great at telling ages of children but maybe he was 7? He was definitely able to stand on his own well I just googled 7 year old child and the images there seem about right. Also just to clarify, I do not hate children at all. I made a choice not to have kids and I don't think people who made that choice should take priority over me, but I'm not a kid hater at all. I support everyone's right to choose whether or not they have kids. Interestingly lots of people assumed I'm a man. I'm a 33 year old woman. Not the asshole. Public transport seats are first come, first serve, unless designated for those who are elderly, pregnant, or have disabilities. If you fit none of those categories and there were no such requirements for the seat, you have every right to stay seated. Not the asshole assuming that the child doesn't have any problems standing on moving transportation. ETA, since I keep getting replies about the child not having issues standing. I didn't say the child did have issues standing up on public transportation and it doesn't necessarily mean the child is disabled. There was a time when kids, of school age, were supposed to stand so adults could sit, on the grounds that they have younger legs. When did this change? I am Asian so maybe there is a cultural difference but WED always give away seats to children, especially if they are around 6 or 7 as per your estimation. I think we can be a bit more nicer to kids or people traveling with kids even if we don't have our own. Cold sweat smile. I have little kids. It's best if they sit. Even at 8 they don't have great balance on moving transport. And parents have to support kids and themselves if all standing. They also get tired pretty easily and may have had a massive day already. But I would also never ask somebody to move. Seats come and go on trains and I would wait. In high school we were taught to give our seats to adults, but I don't think they are taught this anymore as it doesn't seem to happen. I'm injured. Am I the asshole for spending my money on a new bed versus letting it go toward my sister's braces? I, 16 male, have a part-time job and recently my grandparents gave me some money. So the reason for the money is simple. My parents prioritize my younger sister, 13 female, and their foster kids, 11 and 10, over me and their money and time gets prioritized on them. My parents have been long-term fostering their foster kids, like 7 years now. And before them my parents really just focused on my sister. My grandparents always noticed. They tried to make up for it when multiple talks with my parents went badly. The money, which was a lot of money to before, they gave me I used it to buy myself a new bed. My old one was old and getting loud so with my grandparents' help I bought a new one. My parents knew about the money because my sister saw our grandparents give it to me. My parents were so mad at me because they told me I know they're saving up for my sister to get clear braces for her teeth and I could have helped a lot. I told them I didn't want to help with that. 
that they wouldn't help me if I needed them. They told me that's the thing with being the oldest and most oldest kids don't sulk about it like me. They tried to make me take the bed back and get the money and I refused. My grandparents and parents ended up in a fight over it. My sister called me a dick and said it's not fair that I get a cool new bed and she's stuck with hers. She said she deserves more stuff than me and I called her a spoiled brat and told her to leave me alone. My parents said I was selfish to my core. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. You are not selfish, but you are in a tough spot as you are still a dependent of your parents. Make sure you let your grandparents know how much you appreciate them. In future, since this is causing fights, can your grandparents give you money that you put into a savings account in yours and or their name? Anything you might buy now might get confiscated and sacrificed to your siblings. It would be better to go without now, no one gets anything, and when you turn 18 you will have some money that you can can use to escape with. Make sure you are keeping all of your stuff safe that you will need when you leave home. If there are important papers, items, etc. can your grandparents store them for you? Are you able to go live with your grandparents? Can you live with grandparents man? Seems like mom and dad don't fuck with you. Your sister doesn't need clear braces, that's a cosmetic thing, the usual ones will cost less and do the same. You actually do need a comfortable bed. As I tell everyone I see on here with this issue. Throw yourself into school. Save, save, save. Have your checks direct deposited into an account only you and your grandparents can touch. Make sure you have all your important documents in a safe place. Move TF out as soon as you can, and take the new bed with you. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Ask your parents why the only impartial observers in all this, your grandparents, felt their favoritism was so overt, they tried to stage an intervention. Of course people like you parents probably won't listen to reason. Just know that you are in the right and not being remotely selfish. Clear braces my Aunt Fanny. Girl better settle for a mouthful of metal like most kids her age. Not the asshole, the responsibility of paying for your sister's braces falls squarely on your parents and no one else. I'm glad your grandparents are in your corner, try not to let the things your parents or sister say get to you. ETA I just noticed you said clear braces, so they're saving up for the more expensive option for looks. Double not the asshole. Not the asshole. Your parents are supposed to take care of you and your sister and that includes braces and a suitable bed. You are a child. You have no financial responsibilities towards your parents and your sister. It is very selfish of your parents to expect their 16-year-old child to pay for his sister's braces. Am I the asshole for not sitting next to my brother-in-law at the doctor? So I, 20F, had gone to the doctor for a yearly checkup. I knew my sister, 29 female, and brother-in-law, 29M, were going to be there due to them having their own appointment. I had walked into the doctor's office and saw my brother-in-law sitting by himself so I said hi and asked if my sister had already gone back. He said yes and he was just waiting for her to come out again. I go check in and was told I had to fill out some paperwork and they will call me back in a few minutes and if I don't finish the paperwork by then I can take it with me and give it to the nurse. I sat down to fill it out when my sister comes back out. She has to stay for a it for observation due to the test she took so they were talking over in the corner where they sat. She asked me why I was sitting away from them and I told her I was doing paperwork. My brother-in-law being the jokester he said she thinks I stink so she's sitting over there. At this point, I had finished the paperwork and hadn't been called back yet so I go talk to them until I'm called back. I get done with my appointment, I see they are still there when I come out and I say bye and wish them a good day. I get off work and I get message from my sister saying she still can't believe I did that to her husband. I ask what do you mean and she starts saying that me not sitting by her husband at the doctor's office was rude and disrespectful of me and that it clearly shows what type of relationship I want to have with them. She stated that if I had have seen my friends I would have sat with them but the fact that I use doing paperwork as an excuse is disgusting of me and we are no longer sisters. I said I had to do the paperwork and I didn't know I had offended or hurt anyone by not sitting next to you at the office. I told her we were there for different things and I didn't think it mattered. I also didn't want him potentially seeing my paperwork due to it being a private matter and she said that he's my brother and he has the right to know what's going on with me just like she does. I told her no and left it at that. Now she is bombarding my mother and father with phone calls and messages trying to get them to side with her. 
They tell her we are both adults and we have to work it out. If we don't then so be it. She tried to get my dad to say he would sit next them because she asked him if he saw them in public if he would go sit with them and he said he probably wouldn't due to being there for different reasons. She's now mad at him too and we just don't know what to do anymore. Any advice would be appreciated. Your sister's an asshole. I'd usually go with the acronym but I feel she deserves the whole word. No, your brother-in-law doesn't deserve to see what's going on with you. That's absurd. There are laws to protect medical information. It's a big thing. You don't go to the doctor to socialize. You don't chat while you're filling out paperwork. I've no earthly idea why your sister went nuclear over these issues. But she absolutely went nuclear. TBH. I would have just said, no, he does stink lol, and left it there but you're a sweetheart for trying to work it all out in civil fashion. Not the asshole. That medical paperwork is tedious. It was more important to complete it than possibly letting your brother-in-law distract you. And yes, medical privacy is a right. Plus, you talk to them both after turning in the paperwork. Is your sister normally like this? She seems very selfish and controlling. Not the asshole. First of all, he is not your brother. Second, if you didn't want your brother to know why you were at the doctor, that would be perfectly understandable. And no, she does not have any right to know what is going on with you either. I have a feeling that she is 10x more upset about this minor snub than he is. You could explain to him, and I'm sure he would say it was NBD. Regardless, my advice is to simply ignore any communication that has to do with this and respond appropriately and immediately to all other communications. The fun one is when her calls get dropped every time she mentions this incident. Not the asshole your medical information is private, and no one in your life has any right to it. I'll be honest, this shocked me. She stated that if I had have seen my friends I would have sat with them but the fact that I use doing paperwork as an excuse is disgusting of me and we are no longer sisters. That may be the biggest overreaction I've seen in a while. Is your relationship with her already strained for other reasons? This just feels like a huge reaction that's out of nowhere. Regardless, that's a ridiculous reaction to such a minor and unintended slight. Your sister is definitely wrong and definitely toxic for trying to weaponize your family over it. She sounds exhausting. She says, he's your brother and he has the right to know what's going on with you, just like she does. No one has the right to know your medical information except your healthcare professional, you, and parent or legal guardian if you're underage. There's a reason there are strong federal laws regarding this. Your sister doesn't even have that right you choose to share it with her. Your sister is disrespecting your boundaries in a really aggressive way. Not the asshole. You're not obligated to accommodate someone else's preferences at the expense of your own comfort, especially in personal situations like doctor's visits.